Get your day started right. From our shack to yours, this is Coffee and Ham Radios. We are live in five, four, three, two, one. And welcome to another edition of Coffee and Ham Radios. Thanks for joining everybody. It's much appreciated. Today, we're joined by our good friend, Tim, G5TM. He's British, but we won't hold that against him. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> we, asked, we asked him to be on the show and uh, help us talk about all things ham radio, but probably a little bit of a focus on antennas. Tim has a Kraken YouTube channel, and I believe we have that link to somebody can check and make sure I did that right. <clears throat> and uh, we'll also drop links into the chat, but you probably already are a subscriber of his. But if you're not, go ahead and subscribe. Tim, what's going on, man? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me, gentlemen. And I will call you gentlemen because uh, I'm British <laughs> and we do things properly. I've, le I've left the bowler hat in the, in the other room, but if I had it with me, I would tip it to say hello to you all. <laughs> so uh, thank you for inviting me, gents. And it's uh, what time is it there? It must be about what, 9 a.m. or something. Maybe yeah, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. So thank well, you for getting up so early. Seven, <laughs> Chuck is a little earlier. Yeah. <laughs> is that what time is it with you, Chuck? Is it a bit earlier again? Seven o'clock. Oh, crikey. Okay, so, well, kudos to you. But I'm up. <laughs> I'm up this time. Was At his age, he's up that early anyway. So they're afraid, you know. afraid you're going to miss stuff when you get to be that age. So you right. get up earlier. So. That's like, I got to get up to bed. I just, can't, yeah. I just don't sleep that long. I don't need that much sleep. Uh, I literally woke up about five minutes before I rolled into the green room. So that's just. Uh, <laughs> we know. We can tell. <laughs> we're we're sure of that. The way, way I operate. Very nice. Um, I don't know if we had anything we needed to announce before we get started. Is that, uh, are we good? I just wanted to thank Tim for making us all look smarter here on the show. I mean, with Tim here, we're, we're easily a, a one person, one and a half person show now. It's great. <laughs> great. <laughs> when we get somebody on, who knows what they're doing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Well, Tim, you want to tell us a little bit about what you, what you do on your channel and uh, a little bit about you? Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I I really just enjoy operating mobile and portable. That's my main thing. I've got a shack here, but I rarely use it. And uh, I like goofing around with antennas. I've got an antenna uh, addiction. Um, you probably get you, you guys are probably the same. You put an antenna up and you tear it down within a day because you think of the next one and then the right. next yep. one and then the yep. next one. So uh, I'd love to find the ultimate antenna where I can just settle on it and use it for the rest of my life, but that's just not going to happen, is it? Um, so I like operating portable and mobile, and I yeah, I, I try to fit radio around a busy life like you guys have got. I work full time, and uh, you know, radio has to fit around everything else, which I think is a healthy thing. Um, but I'd like to spend a bit more time doing my passion, but clearly. Other things have to come first, but work I enjoy it. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Work intervenes and then some, precisely, Jim. Yeah. So, uh, but there we are. Yes, that's what it's about. Really, just enjoying the hobby. And um, I'd like to do. I'd like to be more productive in my videos. Do a few more every month. Than what I'm doing, but um, generally, if I get out there, I give it a go, and it's good fun. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I agree with you about the antenna stuff. It's like. If I can just get this one antenna up, it'll be the antenna to end all, and I'll never have to worry about it again. And then, as soon as it's up, you got the next the next idea is cooking. And uh, yeah, so the one antenna like an to addiction. rule them all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it makes it fun, yeah. right? I mean, th to me, the the antenna part is the is the more exciting, fun part of uh, yeah, of the sure. hobby. I, Some people well, sure. aren't quite that way. You want to you want to thank Doc Brad over here? I, yeah, I do. But uh, yes, Doc, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, top of the morning Thanks, to the Tea and Ham Radio Show. Tea Doc. and Ham Radio. Mm -hmm. Got a cuppa. <laughs> we'll be thank back to coffee next week, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much of an antenna builder. I mean, I'm like, I got a DX Commander. It's up. It works. We're good to go. I don't want to spend the entire well, you're, weekend you're, playing with wires, but building that, you're you're ahead of us. Require few going outside operators. Yeah. yeah, it has nothing to do with going outside. We, we know we know people that have have DX commanders that still sit on the side of their house. That's true. Unbuilt. Mine is in, mine is installed, actually installed. You but, got, you've uh, got we keep more hearing than it's one, coming. Too. Yeah, yeah, he's got multiples. Did you? Yeah, know the both? thing is, the DX commander. Um, he does a great job with that antenna kit. I, I think, uh, you know, it's fantastic antenna. And then his instructions are extremely well written. 
Mm-hmm. So it's not, you know, not that difficult of a build. And um, he offers great customer support on it. Like I've seen people. Yeah. Cal is a great guy. He yeah, really I've is. seen people There's break nice their their pole doing something that they shouldn't. I won't mention who to you. And <laughs> <laughs> I've done that too. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, and then and then he just replaces it. No questions asked. He's a great, great guy. If you're um, breaking stuff, yeah, you're not I moving mean, fast enough. I uh, until this weekend, until yesterday, I started fooling around with building an antenna last night, and I could tell Ape and Chuck were both excited. They were like shooting comments at me. So I'm like, I can't type. <laughs> And put this dang thing I together. So just slow down. I was I was excited about it. I was like, he's going to get bit by the bug, <laughs> and then uh, start. Well, start. I, well I, and if it hadn't been raining when I got up this morning, I would have already had it deployed. But it was raining, and I'm like, okay, well, I have to wait till a little later. But well, um, we'll, we'll not to plug it too much. But the Poseidon is a really easy, easy build, and it's a good entry way into to, to doing that. And I think you you built the Poseidon, and then you're like, hey, I want to build a Poseidon plus plus, right? I mean, that's kind right. of what. Yep. And I rooted through a bunch of toroids I randomly bought off of Amazon like four years ago when I had zero idea about antennas or anything else because I was a brand new ham. And I'm like, ooh, that's a 61. So I'm talking to the professor over there and he's like, well, that's got a great radiation pattern and uh, awesome res- resistivity, but the capacitive directance of the 43 mix might be a little better for the lower frequency. And I'm like, I- I'm going to do this, is- this one. Is it the 61? <laughs> Isn't the sixty one the one they use for uh, the infed halfway sometimes to uh, they for do. the lower band? I or think something? I think I have an MFJ infed half wave in the shop that I haven't used in several years that has a sixty one mix. I'm almost positive it's a sixty one mix. I'm gonna have to break it open. Yeah, um, we got a couple of house cleaning things we need yeah. to do, and then I'm gonna start asking Tim antenna questions if it's all right. Uh, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Uh, Adventures in Blind Videography. Long live Poseidon. Thank you, Shane. Shane is an uh, awesome, super friendly guy. Mm-hmm. Shane, I hope you got your radio you, from Jim. He, oh, he, we, we actually got the exchange occurred on the same day at the bridge on the DMZ. Nice. I mean, it was we handed off the prisoners... Mm-hmm. The, actually, just they crossed in the mail, and they both landed on the same day. Uh, John Gendron, twenty-five dollars to keep the experimenting on the front burner, keep up the Frankenstein efforts. That's funny coming from you, Gendron. But <laughs> yeah. with but your John, he's all right. things, thank you, John, John is a good Thanks, guy. John, John thank yeah, you John's very a good much. guy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. John will give you. Just takes one to start a movement. That's right. Thanks, and then we have um, Richie. Richie's Richie has dropped hey, a four dollar super sticker. Richie, appreciate it, buddy. And how about how about the happy lady? She likes antennas. <clears throat> Richie, so I haven't Tim- seen a video on your channel in a while, man. Yeah, Richie, get to work, son. Um, so Tim, when you go portable or mobile, you're saying that's what you like to do. How do you decide what antenna you're going to take? Oh, a lot of it's down to how much time I've got to actually operate because uh, I tend to grab an hour here or, or an hour there. I don't usually have like a whole afternoon rarely to operate. So if I finish work a bit earlier, then I'll just head off to a high spot, which is about a 10, 15 minute drive from where I work. And I'll just pop up um, a, a mobile antenna. Now, funny you should ask that question. I mean, we haven't rehearsed this, ladies and gentlemen, but um, <laughs> I, we haven't, honestly. But um, ones I've been using more often than not lately is this bad boy. This is the Mad Dog. Oh, Mad Paul. Dog, yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful. Mad Dog. Hey, they're so well made. Um, oh, I've got the four, one, two, three, four of these bad boys on here, the four uh, sleeves. So I can just basically plug and play 40, 20, oh. 15, and 10, and that's what I do. I mean, Wolf River Call do something similar, don't they? Do they have some? They do, yeah. In yeah. they don't sell the parts that uh, Mad Dog uses on those coils in the US. That's like a irrigation tube and caps on the end, so uh-huh. it's actually already uh-huh. spiraled. We just yeah. have, you know, plain old bare naked PVC pipe. Okay. So what, what what's good about this is, and I've got another, one I can sh- another type of thing I'll show you in a minute, is that you can remove the the top part. Um, um, basically, what you can then do 
is take this bit off and put a lug in here and then you can basically have a wire off it so you can load a, a, like a wire antenna and do that so that's quite chunk. interesting um and the other one i use is a slide winder which is a uk company which is yeah, basically very a similar similar there thing but you've got the the that coil one's... and you've got the sleeve up and down this is very lightweight really good for i would think soda and things like this and again you put a whip on here it's a 3 8 fitting as is this one and then i just operate with a uh, good old fashioned either nine foot cb tank whip quite a quarter wave or if i'm not use 10 meters i put a six foot whip on there and that's basically what i do it's as simple as that and it's basically a poor man's tar heel isn't it these basically you you, you do the adjusting yourself right. rather than rely on the motor to do it you know that but first one you showed now what yeah. the mad dog you called that mad dog yeah. coil is called yeah okay that looks like and something that keeps the uh, DeLorean time machine running. <laughs> I mean, that's well, is, um, yeah, that's a, an um, impressive looking build on that thing. It's really well built. Uh, he's got two versions. This is the 80 through 10 version. So you can basically what you can do with this is put one of those 17 foot MFJ whips or the, the you know, the cheaper okay. Chinese version, telescoping yeah. whips, put one of those on here, put it on a tripod. And then you can adjust. It comes with one of these. You've got to buy. You've got to pay for the extra ones of these sleeves. But you adjust your sleeve down. It'll give you enough inductance to run eighty meters. Uh, but he's got a forty through ten one, which is a shorter one, which is obviously gives you less inductance. So yeah, do it's, those it's, sleeves um, contact one wire, or do they contact like four wires? They look pretty that's what thick. What it looks like they'll is contact that they're four. Yeah, they'll contact yeah. four. So what you have to do. You have to basically get the the higher bands done first, and then you tune each one, and basically. But basically, this is set now with a six, seven foot whip I use with this. This is set, and I just plug and play. So if, the good thing about this is, if I want to change band, literally, I go from forty to twenty. Yeah, that's awesome. Change. That's yeah. the thing about it. Sweet. That's that's the USP. This is great, but that's the USP for this one over this one. But so this one's great your, for your fancy B two B terms. So there it's a, have, it's. What can I Unique selling proposition it's, for those folks playing along at I, home. I had no idea what the hell he just said with the USB. Thing. I was like, what is that? That's, that's, that's why I'm in charge thing. of business and you're in charge <laughs> of, of shipping. That's that's what makes it different. <laughs> I'm there sorry, Mr. Steve. <laughs> so that thing, that's actually similar to that uh, Australian antenna that had, it was all enclosed, but a small coil. Um, I forget, Outback or something like that? Let's see if I can find yeah. you a link, Brian. Well, the the way you have it set up. Product. Yeah, this is an Australian product as well. It's from BK. Okay. And um, his name's Marty, right? Marty, yes, Marty Nelson, and he's got a channel as well. They, um, I mean, I think it sh takes about a week to ship. It took a week, ten days before Christmas. It took a week right. to get here, which is really impressive, to be honest. So uh, there we are. But they're both good products. A slide winder as well. Lots of people use them. They're very versatile and they're very easy to use, both systems. And uh, I, that, that's what I tend to use more than anything now. Apart from that, if I'm, if I'm going for a full size antenna, then for easy deployment and performance, I always plan portable for the end fed half wave. That's just the way I am because it's just so easy to put up and you're just on the air very, very quickly. And, and they work well. They work well. Yeah, ours has been ours has been very popular. And I think I think now yeah. the, the Poseidon has I mean, we've been selling the NFED for longer, but man, that Poseidon has just blown up, just absolutely yeah. blown up. Yeah, much and, more uh, than, we, than we thought it would. And yeah. this guy over there on the other side of you, Tim. Yeah. I mean, he's been, I mean, like late, I'm sure Miller Lite might have been involved late at night. Man, I love this Poseidon. And he's showing his PSK <laughs> reporter contacts. And I'm like, okay, all right. And I, and I like it. I I thought it was one of the easiest builds. And I like I said, I'm not really an antenna builder type. Not really my jam most of the time. But but uh, it works very well. And, it's got your juices flowing as well. That's that's the yes, sir. It, yeah, it does. Yes, as far as antenna goes, yeah, exactly right. So um, you feed it with a go on. Sorry, carry on. Sorry. Well, I was going to oh. ask you more about the coils <clears throat> because um, okay. Uh, th those two are really good looking coils. Uh, the Sidewinder or Slidewinder is super duper popular. Um, I have seen Mad Dogs, but he did a build video on one of those. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he does is he has a little bit of spacing between the wraps and the coil and where some of the other coil manufacturers don't do that. Mm. Um, Tim, did you, you did a video on using coils and you, I, I believe you did like base mounted versus center loaded. Was that, did oh, you yeah. do that? Yeah, I've um, done a couple of that, yeah. 
and also, so, I was hoping you could do a little bit, talk a little bit about that, but also the spacing between the wraps reduces the capacitance that's in the coil. And some of, some of the other ones that have the tighter wrappings on them, you're using the coil to add inductance, but if the coil is capacitive, you kind of counter some of that inductance and you have an efficiency problem in the, in the coil as well. But I saw your video and I thought it was really good. So I was hoping you could kind of maybe explain a little bit between base loading and center loading, I guess is my whole point. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, to be honest, um, there's like two different, slightly different use cases here with a vertical. Let's say you're using a ground mounted vertical, for example, then there's pros and cons with a base loaded vertical. For example, you need far less inductance. So you need a smaller coil. Um, but the problem is that it's less efficient than going center loaded. With the center loaded, you're probably using around double the inductance in the, in the chunkier coil, which mm. can be a physically more of a challenge, especially if you're operating, operating portable. Um, I, I, I tend to find that oh, it, actually there's been a lot of stuff about this done by a guy called, and he's, he's a silent key now. And if you've read anything about antennas, you've probably come across him. A guy called uh, Chebik or Kebik, C E B I K. Sure. W four R N L, I think was his call. Now he did some stuff on this, and he found that a lot of people say that center loaded verticals are just way better than base loaded verticals, and they are better. But he only found this with a half size vertical that center loaded was only about a couple of dB better than the base loaded vertical. So a lot of people get themselves into not thinking they have to go center loaded. The base loaded verticals can do a decent job for you. Uh, it's a question of the type of ground you got underneath as well, whether it's conductive ground, if it's this rocky hard ground, you're, you're, against, you're up against it anyway. And also it's, a, it's down to how many radials you use and the radial system is obviously going to be very important as well. So yeah, I mean, base loaded antennas do work and do work surprisingly well, even compared to center loaded verticals. With, mo with mobile antennas, center loaded verticals will have a slightly better performance again because you've got the you've got the car right underneath your antenna and i think to move the coil away from the metalwork improves it that little bit more than having a base loaded antenna but it's more of an issue with a car because obviously you're, you're gonna you're not going to guide the thing and having a center loaded uh, antenna can can be that much more difficult maybe to to operate with on a car compared with having something which is base loaded and which is very easy to adjust when it's just literally just above your roof line, you know. So there's pros and cons to it, but center loaded is better, but don't write off base loaded verticals. And, you know, you're, you're going back to your, your Poseidon on 40 meters, effectively, that is, the Yunnan is doing a little bit of heavy lifting in terms of loading up at the base, isn't it? it sure. Is a, a kind of a base loaded vertical. If you put a tuner at the base of an antenna, that's a base loaded vertical. They do work. They do work. Um, yeah, what, what I was done, reading, yeah. what I was reading was is that a lot of times with the center loaded, you you have more um, radiation resistance than you do with a with a, yeah. with a bottom right bottom yeah. loaded vertical. And, and radiation resistance is basically energy that makes its way to the antenna and doesn't doesn't go anywhere but out into yeah. the uh, into the atmosphere. Um, and you want and you actually want that to be pretty high, right? And and which is yeah, and, um, absolutely because yeah. Because let's take a quarter, let's take a base loaded antenna. There's your antenna, and the current's going to be at this at this strongest right at the base, and it tapers up like that. So it, right. it's nothing at the top. So with a center loaded antenna, if you uh, you take the current so that more of it is being radiated higher up, so effectively you're taking the the, the weight away from the base of the antenna in terms of having to produce all the RF. So with with a base loaded antenna, as I say, it's all basically at the bottom. Uh, with a center loaded antenna, you, you don't have that sharp sort of increase. You have, it, it comes out more like that and then down like that. It's hard to do with, with my hands. But it, as you say, it increases the radiation resistance because you've got basically a higher current pattern away from the ground. So therefore, you have less loss. And as you say, right. you get greater radiation resistance and less loss resistance because you're taking the high current away a little bit anyway from the ground, which is why half waves are great because with a half wave vertical, Basically, all your high high energy is halfway up the antenna. It's, it's a quarter wave up. So it's away from the lossy ground, and that's why you don't need any radials with a half wave. <laughs> yeah, and oh, um, don't say that. Don't say that in front of Abe. You are you are you till the you fall. No, no, no. Well, the thing is, is that it's le right with this with the center loaded the the radial the ground plane is less it's less of an important thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I tried to explain it, it to all, people, yeah. but I need if I had a British accent, they might listen to me. But because you do it and sound smart, though, they'll, they'll... they're hard to find. 
Uh, I, I don't worry. I'll, I'll put I'll put my Dick Van Dyke voice on in a minute. I'll do my Cockney accent in a minute for you. I'll do the old right. the old lapels. We'll do all that for you in a second. Oh, the, uh, from, uh, from Mary Poppins. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Enough that I remember that. Um, what? We got a couple of a uh, little bit of housekeeping and a couple of questions. Some are relevant to to the show, Tim, and some we'll are do the relevant one last and keep coming up <laughs> a lot. Yes. Uh, how to ham. Uh, hit the like button like it's a pileup, people. Four ninety nine super chat. Thank you, appreciate right, it. Thank you, thank you. Very, very. And uh, ham radio wilderness with Frank. Frank, shorten that that channel name, son. That's a lot of words in this early in the morning. Tim is a fantastic <laughs> guest to have. Glad to have his knowledge added into the group. Uh, thank you, Frank. Frank that's very kind Frank. Of Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have him here. So, and Frank, we hung out with Hank in Quartzsite. Frank. Frank. You said Hank. Oh, we weren't supposed to say that, huh? Frank. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's too early in the and, morning for Chuck. And, and Hank Frank, Frank. Frank knew who I meant. Fr Frank the Hank or Hank, Hank Frank. the Frank. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I noticed on the. Uh, oh, no, hold your water, I, I've used. Hold up. Hold, oh, we still got hold, another one. Yeah, we oh, got an shoot, argument shoot. coming up here. Hold up. No, we don't have an argument. It's not an argument. There's no argument. Rare. I've. Mean, it's not an argument. <laughs> I've ordered pink tumblers. They're coming. <laughs> We're not going to run oh, out. One. And Jim, Jim atoned for his <laughs> malfeasance for saying that I did not want to order the pink tumblers because I was able to document. I had a receipt. He did. And, yes, he did. He did. In, get in the this, grumpy, but in it took, it took him an hour to find it, but he found it. Yeah, that's right. And I, I was just going to say both that of those gentlemen uh, just you know, yes. oh, you have they're coming. We did not order they... forty ounce tumblers. I cannot get forty ounce tumblers <laughs> customized. Pink. Yeah, they only in come pink. in certain sizes. So well, so you can you get guys a forty are... ounce tumbler, but I can't get them customized. Um, that's a lot. And of then coffee, we have man. a question. So the pink tumblers, okay. a couple weeks, they'll be on the website. And don't worry, we're not going to run out <laughs> ever. Lon is asking, is there a way to test unknown yes. toroids to determine their value? Ooh. Yes. I don't know. Yes, because yes, I had ape. Ape. If you're not going to take it, I'll, I'll answer it. Ape yeah, somebody, I mean, said, yeah, the, answer is, the answer is yes, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, but anybody can answer. Okay, I'll take it. So the way that I was told that you do it is by taking a known toroid that you know what it is, and then taking the unknown and doing the exact same wind on both of them, and then you test the known so you have the right numbers, and then you test the unknown, and if it matches, now it's known. And this is because a lot of the toroids don't, like you see red toroids and blue toroids and green toroids, they're not color standards. They're they're kind of quasi color standards, but I can make a blue one and it can be a 43 because I decided that I wanted my 43 to be Tiffany blue. It's not it's not a requirement. It's just kind of like company A does color A and that's why that is that color. And if you get it from company B, it could be the same color because they cheated and copied or it could be something else. So you do definitely have to test them, but when you buy them, mark them right away when you buy them. Yeah, that's Amen. the most important thing is to mark them. But then again, you could have where the person who is packaging them up grabs them off the wrong shelf or out of the wrong box too, right? So you could accidentally get the wrong toroid. Yeah. Um, you can look, when you handle a lot of toroids, you can tell the difference between them. So like I was telling uh, Jim last night, because he had two that weren't marked, that uh, the 45s tend to be a little bit darker and they are a little bit slicker in the feel. The 61s are a little bit lighter and have like a powdery texture to them. Yep. And um, so you're able you're able to tell them that way. The the other thing that you can do is that to toroids are classified by their permeability, which is basically their ability to pass magnetic stuff through the toroid. And they have different values on that. And they have standard measurements to do that. So if you wrap a toroid, I think it's 10 times with a 18 gauge like solid core wire or something like that. And then you um, do a through test with a nano VNA or a tiny SA. You can see the amount of loss that you get inside the core. Uh, attenuation and then that you can there's a formula that you can do that will tell you the permeability of the core and then you can compare that to to data sheets but when i told jim last night the best and easiest way is to go into your so you know the size of the toroid right like you can measure the outer diameter and so say it's 2.4 inches it's a 240 
and I've had to do this where I just go to my email and I search for 240 and it comes back and tells me, and then I can look at the mm-hmm. receipt for where, where I bought it. <laughs> that, that, that's probably the easiest way. Yeah. That's what I actually did. I had, I had two two forties laying here and I'm like, mm, they look different, but yeah. If and you have something to God. reference it against, then that's where you can get the answer. But it's if you just have way, two of them that way. look, look fairly identical, you got to test mean, them out. I got to say, I got to say, professor ape, I laid the first one out because I hadn't, the other one was in a drawer. I had to go get it. And I laid it out and he's like, no, oh, that looks like that's probably a 43 mix. <laughs> what? How can you tell? Well, uh, 61 is going to be more powdery. I'm like, okay, whatever. That doesn't look powdery. And then I got the other one and laid it out. Oh, yep, that's 61. That one's 43. Absolutely. You can tell because of the textural differences between the magnetic flux indicators on the roids. Like, holy crap. <laughs> Yeah. I spend too much time playing with the playing with the roles. <laughs> and yet so, you're so Rod to a has female with asked, children. I'm right? just amazed. <laughs> but th- that that ship has sailed. That's that was done and over with a long time ago. Yeah. Rod's asked a question here. What did the toroid numbers mean? I think Ape answered this, but just to be sure that we don't get this lost in the mix, the different numbers are what the core is made of, and what it's made of makes up its properties of what magic it does for us, and so. What is it? Mix two is the one that you want for a, a filter? Yeah. Like so a like, bandpass um, filter or something? Yeah. So the, 40... the, the way it is, is that the, so for the ferrite cores, which are made up of like zinc and magnesium and, and stuff like that, they, they're considered a mix. So you would see something that would say FT, ferrite toroid, and then a number. So you like a 140. So it means ferrite toroid, 140, 1.4 inches outer diameter. And then the dash and then a number. So if you have a 61, it's a mix 61. If it's a 43, it's a mix 43. Now with the powdered iron <coughs> toroids, they just say T. They don't say FT because they're not ferrite toroids. So it's a T 130 type 52. It's not a mix. It's a type with the powdered iron. So for the Poseidon, it's a T 130 type 52, which is different than an FT 140 mix 52. So it is a little confusing at, at first. The best yeah. thing to do is talk to somebody who builds antennas and tell them what you're trying to do. And then they would say, well, this is the core that's typically used. But what we found with the with the Poseidon, and I'll let Chuck tell the story of how we ended up on the core, um, is, is that a lot of people were giving us a ton of grief. And rightfully so. We deserved it for the core choice that we picked. We picked it for diff- different reasons. Um, and, you know, it it works, but it's not... Here's a, here's what's crazy about it, right? It's not conventionally what you would typically expect right. in a four to one onion until we did some dissection. And we actually, I'm not going to out them, but we found a company that's using the same core. It looks like it's using the exact same core for theirs. Mm. So, but Chuck, you want to explain how we landed on it? I just happen to have one here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's the and thing. Said, like, when you go to a ham fest. So this is what you're supposed to use, supposedly. A lot of people use this one. This one, it wouldn't do what we wanted to do. I, uh, I I wanted it to personally. I wanted to be able to tune it with a three to one, because most a lot of people now on Poda go out with it just like a seventy three hundred or DX ten or seven ten, and that one wouldn't. This one this one wouldn't even tune twenty meters. So that was a that was a no go for me. So, but I happen happen to have one laying around, and and Ape's like, well, they don't use that one. I go, well, I'm just gonna white it and see what happens, and it worked. So uh, yeah, and it's, there you go. That, and yeah, that's and what I, I think I said in a video too. Is like you know you hear all this stuff, but until you actually try it, you don't really know if what you read or or hear is true. You know, I, I hear like for for a double antenna that uh, twin lead and all that stuff so hard to work with. I I don't think it is. It's not as it's not as uh, susceptible to things like being close to things as, as people make it out to be. I don't know. I think twin leads sounds like a, night, a nightmare. And I'm, I'm basing that off of, I've got some la- window line. I think it's window line of the 450 ohm stuff. And it is so yeah. damn unflexible. Well, that's, that's, yeah. So like it's in a coil. And if I take the zip ties, holding it in the coil off, it still stays in a coil. And if I run it across yeah. the yard and it just <laughs> whirl, like a slinky, it goes right back. Do you use, yeah. do you use a uh, use twin line at all, Tim? Yeah. 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 Oh, I've, Tim's I've, a real I'm, ham. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of the. You can make your own. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Yes, you can make it go up to 600 ohm. You can do what you want with mm-hmm. it. Um, 
I, I, I used the four. I used the three hundred and the four fifty. Three hundred is all right. Three hundred is very lightweight. Um, yeah. The four fifty, because my shack is actually right under one side of what would be a centre fed antenna. I, I cheat. I basically bring the the twenty right down into a ballon, short bit of coax into a tuner, uh, like an outside tuner, and then straight into the into the shack that way. That's what I do. Um, but you know, the, 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 I think Chuck, do you? Do you you use doublets, Chuck? Have you got a doublet at home? That's, tried that's my main yeah. antenna for my yeah. uh, lower bands. Uh, it it's very great. hard to beat. It's it's hard to beat a doublet. It really is. But for sheer convenience, and it's going to be yeah. quieter because it's centre fed as well, isn't it? It's going to be a quieter antenna. Yeah. I'd have thought. So, I use the three hundred yeah. also. I just bought a kit from DX Engineering one time, and it's it's been up for years. Nope. And yeah, the three hundred stiff also. And I the only thing I don't like is like right now it's raining. You have to con- oh, then you have to tune. You have yeah, to tune a lot because yeah. it does shift. Yeah. Because it, but I hear you can fix that by making your own. So, what's the yeah, amount of yeah. lex in the actual ladder line? Right in the in the windows is what messes up the SWR there. I, I think so it's I the, quite the spacing of the wire creates the, the spacing the ohmic impedance. Well, the, the spacing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The spacing creates the resistance, right? So the difference between 300 and 400 is the mm-hmm. amount of distance between the two conductors. Yes. yes. But it was, it was my understanding that when that ladder line gets wet, for whatever reason, it somehow messes it up. And then it does. Um, you have to be too. Yeah. 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 And with um, but my understanding was, is that with the commercially available ladder line, because the way it just has the cutouts in the window, it's a little bit more susceptible to moisture and it's a little bit yeah. more susceptible to the water getting in there versus when people make make their own uh, yeah yeah um, yeah i think, that's I think probably the width true. makes a difference too yeah. yeah when you get it farther I, apart it helps yep but you know i mean if you want to use one antenna over a range of frequencies where you've got swrs going all over the shop and impedances all over the shop then it's 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 <laughs> such low loss got such low loss on the uh, on the feed line it's a great it's it's, it's a really useful alternative or option if you just want one antenna to do the whole lot at home it's uh it's a, it's a great little choice it's a great little choice i think that definitely it really is and for the lower bands what do you use it on track is it 80 and 40 is it mainly it yeah i use it shine? on well I, it'll yeah 40 is really good 80 is good and i have a shortened one and that was per dx engineering's so you they say 110 feet is a good sec a good shorter one and the reason i did that is because i lost my i had a point where i was 130 ish before but I was I was hanging it from a eucalyptus tree and I kept I got tired of it falling because it, oh, okay. eucalyptus are, are great for just breaking you know yeah well, and I think so I, stream, yeah different between hundred so one hundred and ten feet on eighty is nothing it's nothing you know? yeah, yeah it's really good and yeah. it's 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 I tell you the truth I've been when I've been testing the Poseidon I I I just leave I've got mine goes through a tuner and I just it's on coax one I put it on coax one untuned. And compare the Poseidon to the doublet, and the doublet's usually better. But I mean, hmm. not as easy to throw up if you're going out in a uh, park. No, you know, sure. And it's, there's no horizontal space. You just put the put the vertical right. up and run a few few, right, few wires on the ground. No one's going to see those, and off you go. You know, it's, yeah, it's probably easy. five minutes at the most to set that thing. Yeah, up. yeah, truly. If, and if that's the big the thing for me. I, I when I run portable, I've got an hour. So I don't want to spend mm-hmm. thirty of it, thirty minutes of it, putting up and setting up and and taking it. Yeah, I want to be on the air in five minutes, and that's the end of it. It's just, you know, I don't care. <laughs> it's got to be five minutes on the air. Right. I want fifty minutes of operating in that hour, five minutes sort of either side, and we've got up and taking down. We've got a couple of questions here, and I don't know if he's trolling or he's asking a legitimate he question. But it's he's Don. using his beside with, with a good multimeter, you can, I think. I don't it's think like, there's any way to actually do that. We need one well, that measures inductance. Well, the problem the problem with multimeters is multimeters are DC; they're not AC, and so we use AC yep. current when we transmit when we our, our ham radio signals and try to talk to people in eighty meters about colonoscopies. And so the thing is, is that gotcha. you're never really going to get a good clean Almost. reading out of a multimeter. Now, I'm sure that there are certain ways that you can look at certain characteristics of toroids with multimeters if you're pretty dang on good but um I, I i wouldn't do it one of the things that you'll see is a lot of people test their toroids with a multimeter and it's not going to work because it's not going to be it's not at hf frequencies because it's dc dc isn't a frequency and um so the short answer is no don't do it get get a nano vna mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Matthew is asking, uh, we've mentioned doublet several times. He's a, a yeah. reasonably new ham and he wants to know some more information. So Matthew, a doublet basically is just a dipole. It's how it's fed and it's made to be non, a multi-band antenna. Yeah. Yes. So basically I'm just going to th throw this up there. You feed it with something that looks like mine's fed with 300 on, which looks like two wires like that instead of coax. This is way more efficient than coax. So I don't, I don't know what the difference is in, uh, Tim may know the difference of what you actually, the difference in coax. I mean, you probably can't tell it, but it, it just gets you more of your power to the antenna, especially when you're tuning an antenna using a tuner. Uh, Tim may have more on that too, but it's just basically just a dipole. It's random kind of. Well, they were the yeah. de facto antenna back in the old days, right? Like everybody would yeah. just use, use a tuner. Yeah, like all, a all of your tube radios right? had tuners, quote unquote, tuners built in, and SWR and 50 ohms wasn't a thing. So that's why doublets were real popular. Yeah. And they really I mean, work good. They do. And, and there's two ways to use it. A lot of people say you must bring straight into the shack into a balanced tuner, which means basically you bring it all the way into the operating room. Straight into you wind straight into the back of the the tuner. That's the two bits of the the ladder line, and you can do it that way. And it probably is the best way. But if you're really stuck, you can always just put it into a nice beefy ballon, like a one to one current ballon or a four to one, and run a short bit of coax, not more than about ten feet, yeah. and put that into a tuner, and that will do. I mean, in the real world, you won't notice a difference. I don't think barely anyway. I've never noticed no. a difference. I, I get I consistently time. get people thinking that I'm running power. A lot of times and i'm not most of the time yeah yeah absolutely it, it's it shows how good it is the lot the loss on that ladder line is absolutely minuscule compared to what you do if you try to run say i don't know uh, 80 meters <coughs> on the 40 meter dipole i mean don't even don't even bother to try it right I mean, right. With, with, right you know you just oh. literally cook, cook up your coax but um but with the doublet you can go as short as a third of a wavelength long on the lowest frequency so you can go down to 40 44 45 feet or something on on 40 meters and you still it's still be a very very decent signal so now it gives you a lot of flexibility use, tim would you use 300 for this or 450 well for for a, for a doublet um yes I, I, I i'd be honest if i had to choose i'd go 450 because the loss is slightly less slightly less, less. But okay. to be perfectly frank with you, I mean, just just use what you got. If you've got three hundred, just whack it up. I mean, it'll work. You know, it'll, yep. it'll okay. be fine. Yeah. If absolutely. I was going to do portable, now I, I do have a portable doublet. It's for my uh, okay. my Elecraft KX2, and I just ran basically the same wire we sell with our antenna kits, and I just ran two pieces, and then it 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 branches off at the top. It comes down, and you feed it right into like one of those little uh, ah uh, yes. It's basically it's what people call the uh, speaker wire antenna, basically. Yeah, and and like you like get you get a little bit yeah. just just the yeah. just the silicone jacket or or whatever jacket it has gives you a little bit of ohms, and I tried separating it about the same distance as a um, as as the uh, the small the three hundred. I didn't notice a big difference on the radio, and it's way way harder to coil up later. And that thing works. Yeah, great. That, when I went yeah. to. I did a, a thing with Josh, one of his first outings with a group on a soda, and I'd say there was like ten of us, and seven or eight of us activated with my antenna. They just kept changing right. their radio or using the radio that was there because it was it was way better than anything else anybody had set up that weekend. That's great. I mean, I yeah, I I, I know the antenna you're on about. Some people use the um, the computer ribbon cable. So basically, what do they that, do, yeah. they but yeah. And what they do, they sort of use the the, the middle, the, the end, the two end wires of the cable as your two uh, parts of the, mm -hmm. the feeder. So it separates and then it. At, that's right. And at the, and at the top of the, actually, at the, at the antenna itself, they then branch off those two wires, like he said, as the antenna, as the actual mm -hmm. two legs of the dipole. And, uh, oh, speaker wire is the other thing, of course, as you, as you said, you yeah. could use. And, I mean, it's a simple antenna, but it'll get, it gets you on the air. And it's, uh, oh, yeah. providing your tuner can cope with all the impedances you've got, you should be fine. You know, it's a, it's a great little antenna, really. <laughs> Tim, is. John is asking about 600 ohm. Would that be better than 450? Again, probably likely to be slightly less lossy. It, mm -hmm. it also depends as well, because it is a bit of a lottery, because 
the, the only thing about doublets is that when you hook it up and you run the ladder line and you've got everything ready, you'll find there'll always be probably a band somewhere that will be twitchy to tune or will be just not quite giving you the SWR that you want. You might only get down to maybe two and a half to one, three to one. And that's because the, the, the combined length of the antenna and the feed line is presenting an impedance, which is tough for the tuner to match. So what people do, and this is the only thing about a doublet, you then would have to either cut off or add on maybe an eighth wavelength of um, ladder line onto what you've got already to alter that impedance. So that's the only thing. So that then really would be the same for using 300, 450 or 600. 600 is slightly less lossy than 450, which is slightly less lossy than 300 if you're using the same antenna system. Um, but you do have that sort of game of having to alter the length of the feed a little bit to alter the impedance that's seen at the end of it as well. I don't know whether Chuck, you had any issues or not. Or did, were you one of the ones that got lucky and got everything sorted? I, first I time? just used I just used what they they sold me 100 foot and I just used it. At first, when I first set it up, I needed that. I was pretty close to needing the whole hundred foot. But there is a, there is a uh, formula for figuring it out. And yes. I didn't even yes. bother with it. I don't think it's. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it works better. They also say a lot of people think four to one is what you're supposed to use. DX Engineering actually recommends a one to one. Because they said that sometimes the four to one could make it a harder match than the one to one because of certain bands so that, on but, certain but bands. That, that's exactly the lottery because that will that will transform right. that will change your impedance yeah and yeah. i found for example i had a 51 foot there just because it was a random length and it was a, a 3 8 wave on 40. and once you get to about a 3 8 wave on the lowest band that's kind of where you don't want to go much less than or lower that in terms of length because or shorter than that in terms of length because your efficiency starts to suffer a little bit then but what I, what I was saying was on on all bar one band it might have been 10 meters everything was fine with the one-to-one -one, and then 10 just wouldn't come in and then i just literally swapped over to a four-to-one current ballon and 10 was fine but then of course i think 17 or 20 wouldn't come in so right. it's it's always a little bit of a twitchy sort of adjustment you have to do with them quite often i could never but get 160. It <clears throat> yeah, well, it's okay. a Okay. It, it's a holy war it's though short. around if you want to do a four to one or a one to one in it. The thing is, is that you do want to use, um, a, a balance, right? Because you're, mm -hmm. it's, you're actually going from balance to balanced. Right. And, and so balance is for balance to unbalanced, assuming that you're using a coaxial cable. And I think that's that that's, the balance. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's part of the, the drama around the four to one versus the one to one. But people also say use a current. Some people say use a voltage. And then it also oh, depends on. Specific. Yeah. And it also says depends on like a lot of people will buy a tuner that has a four to one in it and they'll take the four to one out and put a one to one in there. Or and It really is probably like Tim saying is, is that look at the lottery and then make adjustments as yeah. necessary. If, if you're, so, if you're having a, any a lot of your, problems. On. A lot of your higher end tuners now, like manual tuners is what I use. They don't, they don't even have a balance in them anymore. A lot of them you have yeah. to add it anyhow i use a pal just, uh, what's that pal star yeah. palomar it's pal, pal, pal star pal star pal star, pal star, pal star nice yeah. yeah i mean to be honest with you the most important thing is you have a tuner that can cope with a really wide range of impedance that's right. the key to this all have a tuner <laughs> that can that can literally go from four ohms up to two thousand ohms if you can you know you want right, you want right. a real beefy wide range thing that can take power because you can easily one thing you were you can do, and I've done this. I had one of those, one of those LDG Z100 auto tuners, which are great and great tuners. Don't get me wrong, but I made I made the really good decision to try and tune 80 meters with my 50 foot doublet, uh, which led to me basically cooking the tuner because it was just it was just feeding too much voltage back and then gone blue smoke. You got and, to uh, uh, you got to break work. some eggs if you want to bake a cake, John. I mean, right. I'm just saying. Yeah. So let me ask you a question about about ladder line, John. And so, when you're I saying John, to, who are you talking to? I mean Tim. I'm Lordy, look at this guy. Right. I'm reading comments over here. And hey, it was give, he was giving me a time earlier, right? Uh, you be quiet, giving, Hank. You were uh, giving me the business earlier, and it's, it's like right. almost noon at your house. It's only Hank. quarter to ten, Chief. <laughs> um, listen, Champ. So, uh, Tim, if you wanted to make your own ladder line, for example. You can get spacers from a, a number of places. There's a ton of ladder line spacers on like Thingiverse if you're into 3D printing kind of deal. So 
what kind of, yeah, I probably would, but what kind of wire would you look at for that? So for example, I have a probably 600 feet of cat five wire in my shop in a box that I'm never going to pull anywhere anymore. And I could, I could strip that off and I have like, what is that? 26 gauge solid core wire, I think. Yeah. Network that cable. Unless you're portable. It depends I mean, would that, on, yeah, go on. Sorry. Well, I mean, that, that was my question. Would that kind okay, of, fine. okay. What yeah. size wire it, maybe? And yeah, Depends on what power you want to run. You you don't want to use really thin wire and then pump a kilowatt up it because that's probably not going to end very well. Um, so, 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 20, so 26 gauge wire with a 1500, 1500 uh, watts is going to be uh, certainly something for the neighbors to learn to enjoy seeing. Um, I mean, eight, exactly. 18, 18 gauge wire, probably 18 AWG is probably a good choice because that's not okay. too heavy and will probably take a hell of a lot more power. It, the, 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 I mean, if you're just running QRP or 100 watts or less, you can run, you can use basically almost anything you like. Um, I mean, 26 gauge will take 100 watts uh, SSB. Uh, I use it uh, for actually antenna wire, you know. So okay. it all depends on the power. It also depends on your use case as well. If you're using a telescopic pole and you're doing it portable, like, like Chuck mentioned, then you want to be using lightweight wire and you're not going to be running power portable anyway, are you? So it all depends right. on your use case, depends on the power you run, and depends on how much, how much light, how much light weightedness, if you like, you want to have with your with your system. So right. you can use anything, anything that suits what you need to do, basically. And the impedance of the ladder line is going to be based on that spacing. It's the spacing be between yeah. the elements. Okay. Sure, sure. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't stress it. I mean, just make it. I mean, you, you can use whatever length you want. Uh, just maybe a couple of inch, couple of inches. I don't know what you want to do. Just make it, uh, because if your tuner is good enough, your tuner will cope with it anyway. And as I said earlier, it depends how much ladder line you need. It depends on your operating space. It's what it, the ladder line is the classic. Oh, sorry, the doublet is the classic. Put it up, hook it up, plug it in, tune it, and just hope, pray to Mary that you'll get the bands you want to use. Uh, <laughs> and then you'll just have to basically adjust the feed a little bit if you need to try and do something about that, you know. But, okay. Yeah. It just gives you one wire in the air that you can do multiple bands with instead of having when, multiple When you've got it set, up. Chuck. Yeah, Chuck's right. When you've got it set, obviously, when it's really long, say, for example, using 110 foot on 10 meters, you're going to have some loads, nulls, and everything else happening. But basically, as a one antenna solution, I think that and the end fed half wave are the two that will give you that one antenna solution. I think they're the two probably better versions of antennas to use like that at home anyway. You know, is that somebody just posted up a really good thing using sprinkler hose as the space. Yeah, that was our buddy Jeff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, He's using you know, another gauge with a sprinkler hose cut <clears throat> for the spacers. Another real popular way to do spacers is to go down to your dollar store, buy big pins, take the inners out. Yeah. You know, and use that as your spacer. You can cut it any size you want. And then you run. What you do is you run uh, zip ties through it. So Ape, Ape would probably love this one because he loves zip ties. I do. You run zip ties through it, and you can, <laughs> and then you zip tie the wire right where you want it. The, you know, you zip tie it to the wire where yeah. you want it. I would probably. I think. I think the stuff I have is either. I think I want to say it's fourteen, but it might be eighteen. The three hundred mm -hmm. ohm that I bought, but it is stiff, like Ape said. I, if I was going to build some, I'd probably do fourteen or twelve, just because. Yeah, I know the the commercial. I'm not worried about the weight. I mean, the commercial 450 ohm the standard one, I think, has 18 gauge. I believe it's you're right. I have some of it out in the shop. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks like 18 about the right gauge. size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's um, there. I believe I saw a calculator out there that will figure out for you the spacing, the gauge of the wire, and then tell mm. you what um, what your resistance is or your impedance is going to be for the for the wire. Um. I wanted to ask 18. Tim also about linear loading. So you have a playlist, I believe, on your channel that covers linear loading. And I think that that's a, a black magic topic that uh, we want to hear Ooh. more about. I'll just, get, I'll just get my witch's hat on. And uh, yes, uh, for linear loading, it's just another way of, of making a shorter antenna. And funny enough, we've been talking about 450 ohm ladder line. The real lazy way to do linear loading, which by the way suits me just fine, is using <laughs> 450 ohm ladder line. You can use 300 ohm as well. Lazy is good. So what? I love lazy, lazy is good. 
So what I found was that I could use a, I could make a 40 meter dive ball, which is about 70% the length. So about 46 feet, two, two 23 foot legs. And all it is, is basically two 23 foot lengths of 450 on. And you connect one wire to the, the ballon, for example, for, for, per leg. So say on one leg, I've got the ballon. I connect one of the wires of the 450, run it all the way down. And at the very end of it, I then basically short the two wires together of the 450 ohm, and it brings the wire back up towards the center. But I don't connect that. That's just left as it is. So you connect one wire to the ballon, the 450 ohm goes to the far end, short the wires together, and you then have a linear loaded, do it for both legs, you then have a linear loaded dive ball. And that will give you, uh, if you calculate around, around sort of 70 to 75 percent the normal length of the dipole what i also did because I, I had too much time on my hands i ran up a third wire which basically went in between the two wires of the 450 ohm and that ran back from the center back to the other way so it was triple linear loaded and i found that with that the dipole needed to be half the length so um basically my my i did one for 15 meters that was literally half the length of a of a, of, a, of a normal size dive ball so, so it's like three and, a half meter, three and a half meters wide exactly yeah so probably not as efficient you know but hell you know if you want to get 40 meters in a, in a space where you've only got 50 foot space and you don't fancy running wire down fences which, which you can do with it right well you can do what you want really but if you just fancy just putting something up without having to run it around everywhere, then that's an option. And it works okay, you know. It, it's not going to be the, you're not going to be the loudest on the band, but it'll get you on the band. It'll work really well, you know. Yeah, so I think so I've done a lot a, of times uh, every antenna is a compromise in some form or fashion, right? And right. so you have to look at things like how much space do you have? What kind of materials do you have? What band you want to operate mm -hmm. on? And everybody's always talking about like, oh, I want to squeeze this much efficiency or like I, I knew a guy that bought uh, LMR 400 to run out to his antenna, but then he had a really, really janky antenna that was out there. And I was like, well, why did you spend all this money on the LMR 400? What didn't want any loss, right? Is what they were, what they were saying. I was like, but you, you get that your antenna is not, not doing you any favors. Um, our, our thing is, is that use what you have, get on the air and then totally. use your experience to incrementally make changes to continually maximize what you're doing with the constraints that you have. Oh, totally. So I've done, and uh, totally agree. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I've done a, this is, this is a good one for Jim. A good project for you, Jim. If you have like oh, cat Lord. five, that's flat. It's, it's not <laughs> no, easy. Because I've taken cat five and cable. done a, huh? It doesn't matter. You're not going to network with it. You're going to make an antenna. <laughs> well, out I don't of it. have any. So don't worry about cat network. Five. I don't have any flat cat. So, types, you, so you buy that and, and do just exactly what Tim was talking about. You attach every other one. And it linear loaded back and forth, and okay. there's a, there's an actual a group that that was that was touting this thing. It actually works pretty well, and like you said, it's way short compared to I think it's what <laughs> what does Cat Five have in it? Five five or six? Eight wires. How many wires? Eight, eight wires. Eight. So you so you basically you you connect all those together, and then and then like Tim said earlier, you take the two outside ones for your down for your feed lines, so you you're getting a space. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to find the flat stuff, but uh, you can it's find it. Terrible network cable, Chuck. That's why it's hard to find it. We don't use it's, it. Yeah, I, don't. It sounds but like a, it sounds like a lot it. of work. It is. It it's a lot of work. I, I don't. I don't know I'm tired if, if uh, just listening. You don't have that. to, but you don't have to do any toroid wrapping at all, Jim. All you have to do is a little right. bit of soldering, like like Tim said. Dude, I now am the proud owner of like five or six antennas. Of I can only use two at one time, so I'm good. I mean, I made I made Cthulhu, the old god, last <laughs> night. I should do a video on that one. I've got it built. It's still you out should, in my, uh, because you understand my trailer. That. But I don't, I Chuck, to your to your point, I don't have flat Cat 5. It's round. Everything right. I have left over is I had to look for it. regular network cable. I, I, see there's a, there's a, I see there's a troublemaker in the chat there as well. I just said something. Uh, uh, John from or England. Callum? Is Callum no, no, no he's, 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 the, he's the troublemaker. The guy, yeah, Uncle, the guy Uncle from England, you know who I'm talking about. He um he did linear he does linear loading a lot with his verticals and you can do that as right. well. I I've um you basically just take half the dipole, do the same thing, and then ground mount it and run some radials. So for example, for seven if you want a, a short antenna for forty meters, just do one of the seven meter legs, twenty three foot legs of 
of 450 or 300 short at the top run it back down hook it up you've got your antenna so it, it, it can work that way as well yeah i know when, when so when i first learned about linear loading watching uncle cal and when he was talking about it and doing his antenna i'm sitting there saying man this bloke is is high on crumpet sugar or something like that he's talking crazy i don't know <laughs> now you're making stuff and, uh, up man <laughs> <laughs> but i'm glad i was not drinking coffee when he said that jesus but, uh now he's a uh, he does a great job explaining it and uh and all and all that stuff so i just wanted to get your, your perspective i noticed that you had the, the playlist on linear loading yeah nice one no it's good it's good fun it was good yeah, it's just part of experimenting isn't it just getting out there and giving it a go and when it comes off and it works you think oh that's nice uh because one time is it one time in ten it does and you've got to celebrate that one time in ten when an experiment actually works yeah so, you, know, you, know, yeah, you had the, what was that antenna you had that was like the the scorpion or the cobra or something like that the, oh, the cobra. Yeah. yeah the cobra yeah. the cobra yeah that's yeah. Like, yeah, i was looking cowboy. it up i couldn't find it they're kind of heavy I set it up at Quartz Fest one time, and because of the all the wire there, it's. I mean, you have to have pretty good support for it. Yeah, yeah. I I can do that yeah. for you, Cal, if you want. But we we need to talk anyhow. <laughs> oh, Chuck wants to have <laughs> words. We're gonna. I we're gonna. Do you and Cal? Do you and Cal want a breakout room or something? Can we discuss <laughs> that? No. Okay. Private room, apparently. apparently yeah. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh dear! Yeah, they so actually so found your load cobra antenna. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's interesting, and that's basically. I I, I have it here still. Um, it has the it's fed with four fifty. Um, it is a little bit. You need a good sturdy pole for it. Which yeah, it's a lot of wire. A, a lot of wire, though, isn't there? Yeah, it's it is a lot of wire. Yeah, absolutely. They actually linear load Yaggies too. They are, um, a lot of companies, yeah. a few companies do that. Uh, M squared, which would used to be something else when they and that was a lot of their their big antennas, like forty meter Yaggies and stuff, were linear loaded instead of coils. Aren't the bazookas like that too? The bazooka antennas. I don't Maybe. know what a bazooka is. Uh, I've never messed with one. Yeah, I think a lot of people suggested to me, but I. It's bazooka. I can't remember. Is it made out of? Is that made out of coax? It's made out of coax. Yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to be real that quiet. Sounds, I think. It just sounds heavy though. It's made out of coax. I know. It'd be a damn heavy. Yeah. yeah. A couple good, know. like three good trees, maybe. It's yeah. supposed to be really yeah. quiet. I've never made one. I'm, maybe I should. I'm broadbanded as well. It's meant to be broadbanded and quiet. You know, something I don't know. Yeah. I've heard one or two good people. Some people really. It's one of those antennas. People swear by them once they've made them. They go on to the you know the bazooka yeah. sort of uh, club and they sort of shout about them. You know they really think you should always do them. I tell you another one I've heard about. So have you heard of the um, the T two FD? Is that the uh, the one with the that's got the resistor in it or something? I can't remember what. You have to look into that. But a lot of people really cool. They really shout about that as well. You know you must try this antenna. Well, okay, uh, maybe one day. You know, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, all good fun. All right. And then since we're on a roll here, I got some more questions for you. So you had did some videos with some vertical antennas without ground or without ground plane, right? Didn't you do like a, a, a work band antenna? Is, am I... Oh, yes. Is that the one I reached the curl about a few weeks ago? The um, the trap one, the end fed halfway, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, what I've done, I, um, I, I'm... I'm lazy and I'm time poor anyway. So what I did, I actually got my hands on some ready-made coax, coax traps, basically. And um, I've been playing around with basically using N-fed half waves, uh, but using a trap to bring in more than one, more, more than one band as a vertical. So for example, I've used one on 10 and 15 using a 10 meter trap and the, the walk one uh, using a 12 meter trap and then using it for 12 and 17. And uh, a, a good friend of yours and mine, Colin, MM0 OPX, you know, you've oh, yeah, on the channel great a few guy. times. Oh, yeah. So there's a guy you speak to at NFED Halfways. He, he knows he knows everything about them. Um, and he's he's messing around with them and experimenting at the moment as well with traps and coils and things. And uh, so, yeah, we're, I'm trying to, we're trying to devise, or he's trying to devise a four-band vertical, which won't need any radials, which is literally an NFED Halfway, where you get 40, 20, 15, and 10 off the same antenna purely as a vertical, which would be a really good portable option. We can just literally put on a, three, a 12 meter pole, 
maybe feed it a meter or two above ground and have the thing going up and you'll have four bands off the back which i think would be really useful to be honest so i'm looking forward to his work on that one yeah um uh, he's he's always fantastic and so yeah. i did a um antenna a while ago that we put that i put a trap in and i call it the shorty 40 and it's a end fed oh, half yes. wave for 40 yes. meters that's around 41 42 feet long and basically it's just an induction coil that acts capacitive because of the windings but it it, it basically builds a tank circuit um at the 20 meter mark so uh -huh. what happens is is that i don't have 15 uh harmonics uh, because Correct. the because the trap eliminates that. But what I can do is I can get 10, 20 really, really well. And then uh -huh. I have a higher Q because of the coil on 40, but I was able to tune that's that right. Right, right for the FT8 section because that's what I like doing. Um, right. And it's it's a great antenna for taking places because it's so short, right? And then it gives me three band option. Um, Absolutely. So whether Mother Nature is playing and giving us propagation or not, I can, I can go between 10, 20, and 40 and uh, take my pick. I'm working on an antenna right now. So I've just literally this morning built a an inductance call 35 micro Henry's, which I think is exactly the one you'd have used. It's exactly yeah. what I used. I uh, put it at the top of the 20 meter, the te first 10 meters of wire for 33 feet of wire. That'll give you 10 meters as a full wave, 20 as a half. And then you have another maybe six or seven feet of wire past the coil. That's exactly uh, which it. will then give you your 40 meters. But you, as you probably found, you've got to be very careful with how you prune that wire because it's literally. You take a couple of centimeters off that top bit, yeah, and for literally sure. you're shifting it lots of kilohertz, far more than you thought you would be. But it's a, that antenna um, model, and it's about modeling, I know. But models compared with a with a full size quarter wave is, is less than s point down. It's yeah. it's it's a surprisingly good antenna for DX. It really is. Yeah, and the Q on is 40. so high on forty mm. that tinkering mm. with that thing just even a little, a slightly slight bit is a. Uh, is a is a challenge yeah. but it is a f really now, what, fun antenna yeah. to build. now what you can do and uh, if you wanted just 40 and 80 and you didn't want to know about 10 and 20 is that you could actually um you could uh, actually sort of change it a little bit so you could actually reduce the uh inductance a little bit on that coil so you'd still have 20 meters but you can have a longer wire on 40s you can have maybe a 45 50 foot antenna which you'd lose 10 and 20, you'd lose, sorry, so you'd lose 10 meters, I should say, you wouldn't lose 20 meters. You'd have 20 meters and 40 meters. So you can have like a two band antenna, but be even better on 40 meters as well. So you can play around with that a little bit. It's uh, that, that inductance of 35 micro Henry's is there more to do with keeping 10 meters as a third band than actually doing much to do with 20 and 40. So you can, you can mess around with that a bit. Yeah. It's, and so uh, one of the things that um, Chuck and I messed around with was using a toroid wrap instead of the coil and mm. put it, putting it out there and we were never successful with it and so you know what you do is you go hit the books and start reading and all that stuff and it's really that the coil because it does have the capacitance uh it, it basically is a tank circuit right and becomes self-resonant mm. at that frequency the mm. toroid doesn't do that right because you have you have less wrapping on it and we were we were never able to to get it to work now we might be able to do it by wrapping the to uh, wrap wrapping like an like an iron bar, like a ferrite bar, as opposed to a toroidal okay. core. Um, We're trying to get it lighter. Yeah. Lighter. Okay. So, yeah. 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 But the thing that we were close, the, we were close a couple of times, but uh, yeah. not, not quite. But the, the thing that with um, that the Colin's looking at with the vertical. So with the, the reason that we use a ground plane with quarter wave verticals is because the way that you feed an antenna at a quarter wave, you have high current in the center, right? And then you have um, the, the way that your currents move so when you have a and a, a half wave it makes it more like a, an s than than an upside down u and you need to have something for your antenna to work against because you have the image currents right that go into the ground when you have a quarter wave vertical when you do a half wave vertical when you're the where you're feeding that antenna is different and it doesn't require the same amount of yeah. it doesn't require the same ground plane on the antenna um, yeah and that's what that's what a lot of these antenna manufacturers come out and they'll tell you oh well our our antenna whatever you know the the laser three doesn't doesn't require ground planes because it's supposed to be a half wave above ground but they start adding all the traps and capacitance hats and and, and not sometimes that causes a little bit of problem and then you need like minimum ground plane or something like that but yeah and who actually yeah. gets most of their antennas a half wave above the lowest band well it, you know it's it's <laughs> right. It, 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 I mean, if you're going 20 meters, you can, it's probably not that do big. It. Six, so, six is easy. 
Six is yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's your lowest band than Rock yeah, On, son. But yeah, but that's, what, what, but, once you get below twenty, you're struggling, aren't you? Debbie yeah, Downs, but that's yes. why that's why Colin. I'm assuming I haven't talked to him about it, but that's why he's looking at putting the traps in there, right? So he'll he'll be able to. Well, it depends if he's on a trap or a coil, right? So like if you do, yeah, like um. I don't think I have a trap sitting around here. I usually do. I think the big thing, the big thing that he's doing with that is to get 15 meters because, uh, as you know, as it stands with our, with our, we just discussed the same antenna. We don't get 15. And, um, why, what I modeled is that you could get 10 and 15 with actual tune traps for those, for those uh, frequencies, coax traps that we're using. You can still use the 35 micro Henry coil and still have the wire for, uh 10 uh, sorry for 40 meters but the antenna will be shorter because 20 the 20 meter up until the coil will be shorter because of the loading of the traps so it'll be a slightly shorter right. antenna it'll be about 10 meters long rather than 12 meters long if that makes sense so 40 will suffer a bit more it will suffer a bit more but that's just how it is here's a little itty bitty teeny this lc circuit trap oh yeah qrp guys yeah, yeah. We, uh, we we did yeah. those a long time ago we did yep um but no, it's fine. Still right? I mean, that's yeah, that's that's uh, a lot of fun to play with those things. And so I have two of these, and, and then I, put, I tried the other one in an in, in an end fed um, instead of a trap dipole. Trap dipole seemed like twice the work. It's a little bit of a joke because it is, but the, the you know I, I'd rather go with the trap end fed than the trap dipole. So I only have to do it once. <laughs> It's kind yeah, of it's, it's, it's more weight. It's more weight, isn't it? Depend, you know, I, I, I've got to use a fiberglass pole at home. I've got no option, but what I've done, I've actually glued my sections together, I've arrow tighted them together. So, um, so it's been up for about five years. That pole it hasn't come down. God knows how it hasn't, but it hasn't. So, but obviously, putting a ballon, even a homemade lightweight ballon, and then putting traps on the wire, is just not going to happen. That's just going to snap the snap the thing in half, basically. So, you've got to be careful of me about what you do. Yeah, so do you do you mess with inverted V's to kind of help with that? Like that's one no, of... yeah, I I I've, I I never run a flat top dipole at home, so I wasn't because I've literally only got that one support. I've got no trees. I've got uh, two six foot high fences either side of the garden. So inverted V, that's how it is. It's got to go. And for forty meters, I've only got, I've only got about thirty foot of space. So literally, my inverted V comes down, and then the last third of each leg has to go along the fences like that but of course with a 40 meter dipole as long as long as the long as the current bit is in the air yeah, yeah. what you do with the last bit because it's all voltage well it's just all voltage you better not touch the bloody thing but it's all voltage so at the end of the day you just that's not a big issue as long as the high current bits up in the air that's what counts anyway yeah, yeah for, for for sure yeah chuck you look Don like you're trying to say something it. oh go ahead what's that i thought you were trying to say something chuck mm -mm. Oh, silly me. Don had uh, so. dropped this in the chat earlier, about five or ten minutes ago. Q on ten is that the same antenna that we were discussing? Eh? The Q on ten, it's not an issue. We, we, you can cover yeah. it's quite quite broad banded on ten meters, isn't it? You can cover the whole band, pretty much the whole band. Pretty much. So the thing is, the the challenge yeah. is the Q comes after the trap or coil, right? Because that's what that's what tightens it up. So your twenty mm. and ten are just like any other and fed half yeah. wave. It's at forty. It's 40 where it becomes pretty steep. The only issue on 10 meters is because it's a full wave, you've got higher lobes, uh, lobes at higher angles. But so you're about about 3 dB down on a conventional half wave or a quarter wave for 10 meters at the low DX elevation angles. So you're slightly down. That's the only compromise with 10 meters with that antenna. But you know what 10 meters is like. When 10 meters opens, you can run what the hell you like. Right, right, right. It's going it's, it's to make it contact, isn't it? So, yeah. They're asking about how you got a one by two in the UK. They want to hear that story. Oh, you want to hear that story? Oh, uh, yeah. Bribes were paid. A, uh, ooh, some people might even say that. Mistakes um, were made. <laughs> well, mistake was definitely made, but not by well, not by me. Um, in the UK, there was a, a, I'll call it a window. Some will call it a, a mistake, but I'll call it a window <laughs> of time. I got my full license in the UK, which is your what's your is it the extra is your main one isn't it, in the states? So yes. Extra is the yeah. So the, I got my version of your one, yeah. extra. Yeah, and I was in September 2019, and at the time, uh, the, the the organization that runs the radio communications in the UK, the government department called Ofcom, were allowing the one to two calls to be chosen. 
So myself with a couple of good friends, all we all passed around the same time. We're in different parts of the UK, but we've got stuff that will do it. So we all went for a one to two calls. Now within about about six weeks of that, that loophole was closed. It was a very short lived loophole. Um, and therefore you can't do that anymore. And it has caused one or two uh, people who have done that, should we say, have sort of been accused of grave robbing because apparently uh, it has been the case that in one or two cases, previous people have held those calls because those calls were around back in the 20s and 30s. We're talking a long time ago. Uh, a bit like your vanity call system, I suppose, in a funny sort of way, but not quite the same. Um, but basically, uh, the bottom line is that's how it happened. Um, I, I checked my call books. No one has held my call. Uh, but I know a couple of my friends have got calls that have been held before, but they've celebrated it. They've contacted the families. They told them, you know, I'd like to choose the call. The families are happy with it. They've even given them stuff about the, the operator, which they put on their QRZ page, the guy who had the call originally. But some people get very sort of uppity. Uppity is a very British word, but very unhappy about no, it. No, it's American too. Uh, oh, I will go with that. Then. Miffed. Okay, so <laughs> some people get very unhappy about it. But it's just like the case in damn damn unchuffed about the situation i have to say that's right they're not very happy about it at all so um that's the story there very long rambling story but that's how it happened well the thing is is that when you make a contact with somebody the most hams the first thing that they want to do is look you up on qrz and find out if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing and i just don't tell you about it (laughs) you're very suspicious and i just don't like why you you know what i mean like I, i just uh well, thing is in the UK, got... <clears throat> yeah, right in the UK, there's been a series. Calls were, were given out sequentially, so you could be G zero, uh, DLM, Delta Lima Mike, and somebody would know. Ah, you would have been licensed around right. 1979, because that's when that series of calls at that time, up to the letter D and L, would have been issued. Right. So literally, people will know. You will know when somebody was roughly you can guess within three months either side when somebody was actually licensed the thing is now because of what i and a few others have done and now generally as well in the uk you can now if you get your full license you can pay 20 of his majesty's pounds to (laughs) ofcom and you can choose a call any call which complies with the full call um layout which is two to three and you can choose anything that is available now, that call could have been used before. That call could never have been used before. Do you know here G5s, G5 STU, for example, a good friend of mine, Stuart? Stu, he, yeah. Stu, yeah. Now, he couldn't have chosen that call a few years ago because the, the system wasn't open then. So it's causing some controversy, caused some controversy because, you know, if Stu and I had complied, we would have been M0 or something. You know, right. it's just, yeah. In the UK, we like to know when people had things and we like things very much in their compartments. As well, soon I think as it's that the ham radio it falls nature. Apart. It so probably is. Him, is, it, is, it, is that you you know, like that in the States as well? Is it like that? With it, it, so what it you're is, saying is the government made it overly yeah. complicated. <laughs> yes. Well, well the thing here. is, is like in the States too, your, your call sign has a number that designates to a region and people will move and they won't change their call sign, you know, because they're like, I'm known as guilty whatever you guilty. know they don't they, they don't they don't want to change it i don't really see the big deal but people do get upset about it because they say that's not representative of the region and i'm trying to make content it goes all back i've to, had a couple i've had a couple comments about that why do you have one call you live in alabama but it's it right what and, and it all goes back to them trying to get their logbook in a certain order that they want to have contacts from a particular region and yeah. you messed it up yeah. because your number looks yeah. different then yeah. it's like yeah. instead of being happy i got they're, a call they're lazy. I like yeah it, upset because your logbook doesn't make sense to you so are there guys on the east coast who've got six calls and things are there guys in new york who've got a six call or a seven call southeast with a northeast call yeah right here well there's we our good friend hamstick eric he has he's in hawaii most of the time and so he's got a he's got a six call or seven it's a seven call right k k h k h six king henry yeah yeah that's right yeah and and then um but people will will give him grief when he was where he was here in the state so he's up in uh wisconsin right wisconsin yep yep and then um we have another friend with a seven call um bo and he used to say he's the lion hawaiian because he would 
had the seven call and then he would be here in the state. He's in um, the Northeast somewhere. And Virginia, I Virginia, think. right? Virginia, okay. that's not the Northeast. Mid, mid, mid Atlanta. I thought for some reason, I thought he was like uh, up towards Connecticut or something, but, uh -uh. but anyhow, people give him a hard time because he's got a Hawaiian call sign and you know, everybody's like, Oh, I'm going to work Hawaii. I'm going to go tell my wife and she's going to give me some, some well, sexy he... time because I worked a Hawaiian <laughs> station. You know, and... He did finally come clean. Time, he's both really. changed his call. He's got a, he's got a mainland call now. Oh, does he? Right. Yeah, because I worked him on Poda, and I, I thought I know that voice. Who the heck is that? Yeah. Oh, my God, Frank. He Bo. was KH seven, King Henry seven. That's the Hawaii call. Yeah, Frank. Yeah. So Frank, you just Frank. Just... Frank trying to out correct the correctors here. That's right. Stay in your you lane, see? Frank. www.com. <laughs> right, right. You're going to end up in ham court, son. You keep so, that stuff up. Tim, with your G five so, call, when you move locations like for portable operations do you need to do gm gi gw oh my god you know you know you've done it to because <laughs> in very very recently the last few weeks again those good chaps at ofcom have decided and i i don't even know if i'm saying this right so guys in the chat are going to murder me if i get this wrong please do but i'm pretty sure now it's coming to the point i'm not sure if it's the case already where they you can actually not use I'm not sure whether you, I do not actually have to use your identifier anymore. So, for example, if I go into Wales, which is my home, my home country, I should be GW5TM. If I go to right. Scotland, I should be GM5, GI if I went to Northern Ireland, and GD if I went to the Isle of Man. You got, the, you got the point. Now, there's two things you can do. You can either insert an E if you want to be England, so I could be GE5TM, yeah, or thing if i go to wales i don't have to be gw5 tm anymore i could be g5 tm boy are those logbooks going to get messed up because everybody's been a w or an m or whatever for all these years and suddenly now you don't have to sign as being a w and m you can still sign it so i think it's become a lot more loose which i'm not sure personally is that great a thing because it's been in place for so long it seems an unnecessary thing to do i don't know but I well, think I, that's what's happening. The, the UK guys in the chat will probably say I'm wrong, but I think that's what's happening. I think His Majesty's so, yeah. government has apparently got too much time on their hands if they can come up with something that freaking complicated. Damn that right. Is, I mean, that is, in, right. oh my Lord, that's insane. So you could have, yeah. you could legally use four or five or six calls within the UK itself. Oh God, I, I think that's what's happening. Please, but don't take my word as gospel, Jim, because it's so complicated. I'm, I, I, you're the British guy I'm talking to. You're the smartest one in the room. So. Oh my right. God, we're in, we're in <laughs> our whole reasons. reason then, aren't we, Jim? Right. We're going down, baby. This is what's happening here. We're going down. If that's the case. Uh, I mean, yeah, but it is. It is. Um, and they, 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 they've given us a kilowatt now, which is lovely. Which means that those who were running a kilowatt now doing it legally. Uh, but basically, yes, we've got what? a kilowatt now, so that's nice. <laughs> and the intermediate, and, and, and yes, and the intermediate calls, and I've got a hundred watts. Uh, and the foundation level guys, and I've got twenty-five watts. Uh, personally, I just think it should be two levels. It should be foundation and full, and just have a hundred and kilowatt. What's the point? I mean, it just seems to be very. Oh, I don't know. That's just my view. But I just have two levels and have a hundred and a thousand and get on with it. Because everyone owns it. How many people? Most people own a 100-watt radio, right? Most people sure. own a 100-watt right. HF radio. Right. And don't forget, we don't have the restrictions in the UK. You get your foundation level, you go on, you go on HF, you, you, you just can't go on 60 metres. So literally, you know, you have a 100-watt radio, probably, and you're going to be restricted to 25 watts. It just seems a dumb thing to do, personally, you know, for the sake of 60 Yeah, and Don, Don's the only person who uses 60 metres anyway. No, so. he's not. <laughs> I have T8 on 60. <laughs> you're ruining the joke, Jim. Yeah, it Jim. wasn't a... Okay. Whatever. He does it every time. It, was, it was a joke. That's, that's I got third it. I laughed day. on the inside. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm kind of needing a new port, so, you know. Well, we're just about at the end. Did, uh, did we have anything else we wanted to cover, or is that, uh, that going to be a wrap? Yeah. So there's a, a show a coming guest. up after hours. Hiking in Ham and Lou, K4 H&H, &H is going to be live at Gigaparts. And then Frank is going to be doing oh, wow. a POTA presentation, Ham Radio Wilderness with Frank. So he's going to drop some links in the channel for those things. He get me something, Lou. But his is going to be at 2 Central. Very good. Lou, if you're driving down uh, 65 through Montgomery on your way to wherever you're going today, holler and stop at my house so I can get my package from them that uh, they still hadn't shipped. 
it's a trap it's all, on the way don't back. Don't do it, yeah. Lou. You'll never, you'll never make it out. <laughs> Lou, it was nice knowing you. Yeah, <laughs> he'll end up in the well putting lotion on. I, I hear, ba- I hear banjos. <laughs> paddle faster. <laughs> and we had some housekeeping too. We, we brought it up on the screen, but we didn't talk about it. Our, our friend Bob. I'm, I'm scrolling the wrong way. Our friend Bob is over at another friend of ours' house, and he gifted a membership yes, and that you. went out to ted w this is bob his real name is chatil but uh, us americans can't say that and he's got a fantastic youtube channel he does a lot of uh drone footage which is just like very cinematic and amazing very I, nice I like watching footage. It. i like watching yeah. his channel it just calms me right down after a stressful yeah. day on 80 meters correcting everybody <laughs> absolutely <laughs> policing the bands is not well, easy. i thought you were That's i thought you were the doctor i thought you were the doctor on 80. Tell people I, I how to take care of their car. <laughs> I am. Yeah. You, none are, none are of you, this like part, internet medicine. Are, are you part of the crash team on eighty? Is that what you do? Yeah, you the that's right. Yeah. We've got a I, I, on I, eighty, Steve. Get the call. I, I sit in my shack wearing my scrubs. I got my stethoscope around my neck and my HT in my hand, and I am ready to rock. Don't mess with people. Rock. Medicine I will, I will find that very hard to get rid of that image now, Tio. Thanks very much indeed. <laughs> well, Steve, Steve is working on the procedure so he can do Zoom colonoscopies. Uh, right. Oh, <laughs> Jim. Do, do them online. Just, just, I'm going to mail you a, a pill. Just swallow it, and we won't talk <laughs> until you're done. Doing my tea, you guys. Do you know that thing? It's all right for you. I've got tea coming up in a minute. It's a very important meal of the day here. You're talking about yes. colonoscopies, Jim. Thanks very we much. We were talking about 80 meters, so... <laughs> That's great. All right, who's all right, in the button, that, folks? Thank you, everybody, and uh, thanks, hey, Tim. thanks, guys. Much appreciate it. Lovely to see you all. Take care. Do, thanks, everybody. Next button there, to you. I got it. And you got end. it. Done.